am Barry Sahasian. Today I'm going to be talking about sliding lines along with grace notes, articulation, getting your lines overall to sound much more interesting and creative. The line I played in the introduction is quite challenging, so I'm going to leave that towards the end. You can jump ahead or go through all of them one at a time. And let's get started right now with number one. Right now, we're going to take a closer look and break down the intro line. I call that intro line one and intro line two. It's in 6-4 time, and each of the sections is two measures long only. So the first line basically is built around an A seventh chord with approach tones. And let me show you how that works. It starts with a C and octave. It slides up to the D. Now we hit the root, then we hit a C, and then the root again. Then what we do is play, what that is, hitting an open E, and then slapping the A on the 5th fret and popping the A on the 7th fret. Now we do much the same thing from the G, which is the flat seven. We hit an open E, and then we hit the flat seven, the G on the third fret of the E string, and then we pop the fifth fret of the D string. Sounds like this. Put them together. One more time. So now we're on to the second section of our line. And it starts out by sliding from the last note in the first section, a G, and sliding up to a C, like this. And so how that works is, as we descend the line, which goes C, B flat, and then A flat, and then G, that would be the first line. It would be popping the tenth, going to the root, and then hitting an octave of the root. And then we slide, going down to the B flat, and instead of popping the tenth, we pop the octave and then the tenth. So far we have. See, I popped the octave instead of the tenth for the second note. And then I pop the tenth after I hit the octave. So the sequence as it goes down, as far as the popping goes, it hits first of all the tenth and then to the root. And the next time it hits the root first and then the tenth. And the third time it hits the tenth to the root and the fourth time. So it hits the root. So what's going on here with this line is a combination of four different elements. First of all, using octaves, and the octaves alternate between starting from the lower octave to the upper octave, or the upper octave to the lower octave, and then the tenth goes in there in a certain place, and then the slide. So four elements. We have octaves, ascending and descending, a tenth, and then we have a slide from the root going down to the next root below in, in sequence of the scale. So theoretically, 
this is a natural minor scale, a C natural minor scale. However, the quality of the chords have changed a bit using modal interchange. I know that's a lot to take in if you haven't studied that yet, but I'll briefly go over it because my objective is to teach you this line. So it goes down. You may have heard that progression, it's very common. I'm not using diatonic chords, like I said, I'm using the modal interchange, so these are all major chords. And that's the explanation, theoretically, of what's going on here. We're going to use the modal interchange, and I'd like to talk about that just for a minute or two, and clear up how you relate to this line harmonically. So we have a C natural minor scale, which is relative to the key of E flat. So the first chord, what we're going to do is borrow from the key of F. In the key of F, a C, this first note, would be a major chord. So we're going to borrow from that, and that's the interchange. That's how it works. You borrow from other places with the same relative scale shape, but you change the quality of the chords, major, minor, and things like that, and it gives you a different sound. It goes away from sounding very diatonic. So that works okay. We have a C minor, and we're uh, relating it to an F chord, and the C would be a major chord in the key of F. So there's our interchange there. The B flat works fine. It's relative to the key of E flat as a five, and we just, we can leave that, oh, we can leave that. We don't have to change it. Now on the A flat, when we're relating it to a C natural minor, we, the A flat would be a flat six, and in the key of E flat, the relative chord, it will be a four. So that's a major. That's fine. On the G, we're going to change the C minor to a C harmonic minor. We need that B to make this G a major chord. Because in the key of E flat, the G would be a G minor chord because it would occur on the third degree in the key of E flat. In this case, the G is the five of the C minor. And that's how it works, basically. I'd like to cover this sometime in the future, as you can imagine from little what a little I've told you. It's complex, but it's very interesting and a lot of fun to work with. And having said that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I ask you might like, comment, subscribe. I'd like to add that I am teaching privately online, and I'll give you a link to my website where you can get more information on that. Until next time, keep playing bass. It's not a bad thing to do.